This app, what you can do is you can set working times and you can basically block apps from being open. The apps that are get, get me are LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. So what it does is it actually locks them out for a certain period of time. You can break it. You can go in and give me break time, but the more times you go in and take a break from not using social media, it increases the time it takes for you to be able to unlock the apps. Yeah. So when I went to the toilet just before, I went to open up Instagram, I couldn't open it. I went to take a break, but I had to I had to wait 15 seconds to take a break. And in that time, I was able to go, fuck this, what am I doing? I don't need to go on Instagram. And I put the phone away, I didn't use Instagram. So this focus, back to what we spoke about this whole episode is what I'm really focusing on. Plus the gym, plus social media, I'm getting more efficient and more productive on things that matter which is for me the business right now, growing my social media, rather than mindlessly scrolling and consuming. I want to be creating, not consuming. All right, folks, meme of the week. Let's go. Let's share this screen. Okay. We'll start off with just a, a nice little LinkedIn, just little pop-up that says your intro is saved. Displaying your pronouns helps create inclusion and belonging on LinkedIn. And of course, whenever you offer something to someone, there is always going to be some idiot that takes it too far and there's going to be acts of malicious compliance. <laughs> so normally you'd see, you know, uh, pronouns as he, him, they, them, and it's just how people want to be addressed. Now we got this lad, Jack Rains. So what does he do? He goes along and changes his pronouns to we, them, boys. <laughs> like, oh my God, this has cracked me up. This guy, he's an absolute crack up on Twitter. And I could just imagine like people going to his profile and just go, yeah, we damn boys. And then people <laughs> actually like trying to address him as we, them and boys and how to use those pronouns. Absolutely cracking. Well done, Jack. He gave me a good laugh. Next meme. We've got baby Yoda, good old Grogu. He's in a hammock and he's just asleep. And the caption is me after watching 10 minutes of something on Netflix that took me an hour to choose. And this just hit me way so too hard, way too hard. I've even got my list set up on, on Netflix and, and all the other apps of stuff I want to watch. I go through that, nah, I don't want to watch it. And I spend like six hours trying to find something. I'm like, great, this is going to be awesome. Press play, bang, asleep. <laughs> That's what Netflix is these days. It's not about watching the thing. It's about getting to sleep. It's about choosing. <laughs> Yeah. And we got a final one. <laughs> Atheist Republic has asked, what's the cruelest thing that's ever been said to you? And uh, Devlin has said, my mother told me I should carry a plant around to replace the oxygen that I waste. <laughs> God damn. And under that, it's just got the carved out stones going. Ooh. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Absolutely destroyed by your own mum. Cannot believe it. There you go memes of the nice week man. and um <laughs> mate let's just go straight into meal of the week all right i'll uh i'll crank uh mine up first and mate these are a couple of porterhouses just look at those steaks and this was my meal Ooh. of the week because we went to our friend's house and we uh played some games and then it it was like about time to go home and the missus was staying for a while i'm like no i gotta go home i gotta cook so I walked home. It's like a 15 minute walk. It was just beautiful. It was, it was pretty hot, but it was just great. Came home, was feeling great after the walk and just threw these steaks on this little Weber go anywhere. So we got two porterhouses here and mate, just, just look at that. Just straight over oh, lump wicked. charcoal, delicious. Look at that, burning the fat on them as well. Nice flames coming off it. The smell nice. was just absolutely incredible. <laughs> There's a steak. You got the, the steak looks great. Token salad on the side, you know, just a bag of salad, throw it on there. You have to eat it. You have to get it done. <laughs> and this is just what the steak was like inside. It was just perfect, medium rare, end to end, absolutely delicious. And I had a, had a rub on there, just salt, pepper, garlic, and it was just incredible. I'm, I'm going to give this meal a 10 out of 10, mate. I do not know how I could improve that meal. <laughs> it was just the whole mate, experience. I have a question for you. Yeah. So I went out for steak on Saturday night and I ordered medium. And man, this thing was mooing. Like it was like, <laughs> it it was, I didn't think it was medium. I'm not one to take something back or ask for it to be cooked more because I was felt rude. But what do you got here? Is this like, to, to, for our listeners, what's a, what's medium? Like what's the, what's the color? What's the feel? Sure. So medium is medium well. So that is between medium rare and well done. So what you would yep. expect is, Let's just look at this 
photo here, let's say your steak is one cent or two centimeters long, uh, two yep. centi- an inch thick, an inch thick. You would expect yep. like the first maybe, I don't know, 10 or 20% of it to be gray, then slightly yeah. go pink and then a little bit more pink in the middle. That's what medium is. So this one oh, here this, this, is perfect this, medium. This thing was this thing was blue, mate. It, I, oh. I, it was blue in the middle. <laughs> so this is the thing. People, especially at restaurants, what you'll get served is the thing that you want will be exactly what it is in the middle if they don't have their processes down. If they cook it fresh from the fridge and they don't let it come to room temperature, it's going to be extra cold in the middle. And when you're going through a steak, you can have it, you can have it raw, which people just don't do. Um, that's only for specific types. You can have it blue, which is room temperature in the middle. And that's that's pretty Oof. up there. My The way I like to eat my steak is called rare plus, which is probably like just a little bit rarer than this. This is medium yep. rare. And then you get medium well, and then you get well done, which is just gray. Just cooked. And then you can get even more okay. cooked after that, which you just shouldn't do. <laughs> so if that ever happens to you at a restaurant, that happens to me all the time, send it back. You're paying a lot of money for a steak. You've ordered it a specific way. If they've not cooked it in that way, be like, this isn't what I've ordered. You know, send it back. So I always order rare plus at a restaurant and it comes out medium rare because for some reason people just overcook steak. <laughs> and that's why I find it very difficult to eat out. Well, mate, I had a date on Saturday night, so I didn't want to be that dickhead that was sending the steak back on the on the old uh, first date, mate. So I was like, I just copped oh. it. No, nah, mate, see, I would have sent it back and be like, look, excuse me, this isn't what I've ordered. And because, you know, I'm not soft, I'm yeah, you're a man, married. I do the hard you're, things. No, you're married. No, you're married. So, okay. For all our single, single listeners out nah, there, nah, 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 you, nah, know nah. What I'm, you know what I'm talking let's, about. Let's, 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 let's dig into this, Ben. What, <laughs> what did you think you would have signaled if you sent that steak back? What were you worried about showing your date? That I look like... A complainer? A real complainer, this fancy dude... That like doesn't doesn't isn't happy with what he's given. Not grateful. This guy is just a wanker. Who sends really? their steak back? Everyone. And especially <laughs> if it's like if it's still mooing and you ordered it well, like it's a difference if it's overdone. Then it's like okay. But if it's something you specifically don't want to eat or you're uncomfortable with or it's just not right, like just in you know, excuse me, sorry, this isn't the way I ordered it. Can you please just cook it a bit more for me? Thank you. Like, do you not? Do you right, think that would signal weakness and awkwardness rather than strength and no, being assertive? No, no, no. It doesn't. It doesn't. Not weakness. It doesn't show weakness. It shows potentially on a first date you've just met this first person. First impressions count most. It can, I think, come across like you're being wanky. Like nothing's good enough. You're not being grateful. Like just eat it. Like anyway, let's talk to the <laughs> listeners. Listeners, all right. I want. I want to hear. I want to hear single guys. <laughs> and gals out there, if you're on a first date and your date is taking their steak back, what are you thinking? Are you thinking this guy's great or gal's great, assertive, you like that? Or are you going, who the fuck is this bloke sending his steak back? I want to know. Shoot us a message on Twitter. Tweet at us, <laughs> at Ben Simpson AU on Twitter, at Baby Backberg. And all you married l- ladies and lads out there, maybe you're in the camp of Bergs. You guys know each other. You've been, you've been here 15 years. Nothing's off the tables. First impressions count, all, all I'm saying. I do think with a head like yours, you do have to be concerned about <laughs> about the little need, things, mate. Every little thing will count to make up for that dome. Look at that scone. I need everything running in my favor. And setting a stake back is, is is not that. Now I get it, mate. Now I get it. Not only does he have, have a head like that, he also sent a stake back. Don't worry, I'm with you on this, mate. <laughs> and, and because and because you care about yourself, your health, and your life so much, this is what you've had for your meal of the week. <laughs> so for the listeners at home, my meal of the week this week usually is somewhere I've gone out for for a meal, but this week it is a frozen strength meals package from Woolworths, a high protein Moroccan chicken, chickpea and pumpkin, zapped up in the microwave. That uh, I was living on this for about a week, Bergs. I was about two weeks off from having like a, like a good meal of the week. And I was like, mate, let me just show you what I've actually been eating for lunch here. Uh, so here it is for all you, again, single lads and lads out, lad- laddesses out there. You know the feels. Get those <laughs> microwave meals up in here. Crypto life, startup life. <laughs> Bachelor chow, you've got 40 seconds to eat. And I'm going to give this 
a 3.9. It's not that great. <laughs> <laughs> and usually I'm still angry afterwards, but it is what it is. Mate. We hey, like- <laughs> on your on your date, did you pay for the did you pay for dinner? Of course, mate. That's a bit chivalrous, isn't it? Gentlemen? I am the gentleman. I pay for dinner. Fantastic, mate. Do you ever get the no? We'll split it, or is it just always cool? No, I've had that before. I mean, I'm not actively dating, so I can't say the uh, the sort of the, the, the data is uh, probably enough for a for a result there. But no, more more often than, than not, I'm, I'm paying. What about you, mate? You, I mean, you're married, but single days, are you paying? Oh, yeah. I mean, you're... Yeah, I yeah. mean, if, I always think like if I ask them out to dinner, I'm going to pay for dinner. Yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's just, yeah, it just makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, it's no fuss. Yeah, all good. Mate, let's get into our accountability. So we keep ourselves accountable. And Ben, you were like, Oh, I don't do these weekly goals. I only do the big boy stuff. It's got to be at least quarterly or yearly. You know, talking it up. I only do big sweeping life changes, mate. <laughs> and then I don't know why you got an English accent, but you do today. <laughs> so I believe your accountability was, I'm going to start reading. I'm going to go to the gym. I've got an aura ring. I'm going to fix my sleep. I'm just going to be human optimization. So we need to check in with you, mate. How is all of this going? How are you tracking with your reading gym? and sleep and it also was my social media so that was the big one as well i wanted to be consistent on social media so first of all focus has been a bit of a focus of mine plain words there i don't know this app (laughs) what a word spending too much (laughs) bit of a wordsmith bit of a wordsmith i have been spending a bit too much time on social media since i've been posting on social media right the dopamine is just addictive as all hell not gonna lie I've seen so, you been replying at weird hours. So I'll be like up late because I can't sleep. I'll just have a quick flick, tick and flick, mate. And I'll be like, oh, Ben's posted something. He's replied, he's liked. He's, I'm like, mate, it's going overboard. So one of the biggest things about growing social media that I've learned is like really community. And I, lo- and I love everyone that's sort of engaging with me, but it's, it's really ramped up the last few weeks. Like there's, I've been getting like a fair bit of commentary and stuff. And I like to reply to everyone that's sort of commenting, but it's getting to a point now where it's like, I walked out of the elevator the other day at the hotel on the wrong floor and put my key card in the wrong door while trying to tweet. <laughs> you sent me a message about to, that. I'm like, oh my God. I believe my I reply was, ask. Ben, I think you need a guide dog just to help you out in life, mate. Like, you, you're like I'm somewhere where I don't know where I am. I'm supposed to be over here. I put in the wrong door. <laughs> Like I, I had to ask housekeeping where my room was because I genuinely didn't know where my room was. And I was on the wrong floor anyway so i downloaded this app called opal and i and it connects on your i don't know if this is on iphone it connects with your screen time and this is this hit me in the fieldsbergs this is what got me to pay for this app i had to plug in some data and then it came up and told me how many years i will spend on my phone over the course of my life oh mate that number was 16 years I will spend on my phone if I keep at the rate I'm going at. 16 years of my life on my phone. Do you know people on average spend eight hours on a screen a day? So if you spend eight hours sleeping, you've got 16 hours remaining, that's 50% of your waking life. So for those listening in, you can go on your phone now and you can go to digital wellbeing or screen time and it'll show you in your phone how long you spend on there per day uh, like a seven day or 30 day chart and what apps you're using. So, and a lot of people will be surprised where of that, let's say you're spending eight hours on there a day. And one of my mates was very surprised. Three hours of it was Instagram, right? Wow. Which is just incredible. So he's literally spending 30%, oh, just under 30% of his life on Instagram. <laughs> That's insane. So it's anyway, crazy, isn't this it? app, this app, what you can do is you can set working times and you can basically block apps from being open. So if you look, for those that are home, the apps that are get, get me are LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. So what it does is actually locks them out for a certain period of time. You can break it. You can go in and give me break time. But the more times you go in and take a break from not using social media, it increases the time it takes for you to be able to unlock the apps. Yeah. So when I went to the toilet just before, I went to open up Instagram. I couldn't open it. I went to take a break, but I had to... I had to wait 15 seconds to take a break. And in that time, I was able to go, 
fuck this, what am I doing? I don't need to go on Instagram. I put the phone away, I didn't use Instagram. So this focus, back to what we spoke about this whole episode is what I'm really focusing on. Plus the gym, plus social media, I'm getting more efficient and more productive on things that matter, which is for me the business right now and growing my social media rather than mindlessly scrolling and consuming. I want to be creating, not consuming. That's what I'm working on. And it's going fucking well. That's so interesting where you wanted to focus on your social media, but it's also fueled your social media habit by replying. Yes. But at least it's slightly productive, but it's affecting areas of your life. And even you just going to the toilet now, that was a short break, right? And it was like like very quick, like two minutes. And you still pulled out your phone to go on Instagram. Like that compulsion is still there. I would I would bring up Twitter every time I go to the bathroom, I reckon, or the kitchen or anywhere. Yeah, it is crazy. How's your sleep going, mate? And uh, your reading has been has been rough actually since I because I was at home for a couple of months and now back on the road. Like the first couple of nights was actually pretty shit. I was watching TV and just having a shit sleep. But last night, mate, it was good. Phone was away for two hours before bed. Read, slept, slept. You know, bloody good. So I just need to get back in the. You know, when I'm moving and traveling, I lose that routine. I need yeah. to get. I need to not lose a routine and get back in faster. So something to work on, but no, I'm getting there, mate. Fantastic, man. All right. What do you got for me? How's your Duncan going? Mate, all right. Let me tell you a story. Long before your time. No, no. <laughs> That's from Under One Roof. It's a classic show. It's an amazing Singaporean show. All right, Dunk update. So first of all, I've been training like an absolute madman. So I've been lifting heavy, been getting out on the bike. Uh, I need to do more jump training, but I've been getting amongst that as well. Oof, it's tough on the knees, mate, I tell you. <laughs> so every day I'm just exhausted. I'm doing something every single day. Even the other day I was up at like, oh, it would have been like 8 or 9 p.m. And I, I was knackered. Look, look, I was fucked. And I'm just like, nah, I've had it. And I'm like, no, you know what? I was listening to David Goggins and he's like, you know your feelings? fuck your feelings, motherfucker. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? Fuck my feelings. So I tell the miss, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go work out in half an hour. By this point, it's like 9.30. She's like, you got no chance. What are you talking about? And then it was literally 10 o'clock and I'm like, fuck that. Reverse the car out, go into my garage and did one of the best lifting sessions I've ever done. And it was super late at night. I was on zero energy and I still managed to punch it out. And it was amazing. And my latest thing is... I used to listen to music all the time. Nice catch there, mate. <laughs> ben just dropped his microphone. <laughs> From his very, very unstable Continue. flat desk. <laughs> <laughs> and Goggins was saying, he's like, he's like running down the road. He's like, people ask me, why don't I listen to music? And I'm like, when the times get hard, the music ain't going to be there, motherfucker. <laughs> he's so funny, mate. You got to listen to this guy to get amped up. And then he was in the gym. He's like, hear this fucking music pumping. This is some bullshit. And I was like, actually, like every time I do, I work out, I either listen to a podcast or I listen to music and it does affect my mood. And sometimes I'll wait for a song or I'll change a song or I'll be like, oh, just to the end of this. Stop doing that completely. So it's just silent. It's just me and my thoughts. And now my workouts are at least 30% faster. I'm not distracted and I'm just working out heaps better. So I'm at my all-time high deadlifting for sets as well, which is 115 kilos. I've lifted heavier like one time like max and i've got a lot left in the tank but i'm just taking it slowly two and a half kilos per session and i'm feeling amazing i can feel my habits changing like i've I've got this weirdness where i know i need to go and work out otherwise i just don't feel right like it's it's like almost like pulling (laughs) me away to the garage to go and work out and the workouts just have more intensity and just working out without music or a podcast is like a cheat code it is so so good that is amazing for me. All right, so dunking. Now I've got this little formula, Ben. I've uh, crashed the numbers, Ben. I've got a formula. <laughs> so dunking, there's a lot of areas you have to look at. Speed, technique, power, weight, how fat you are, right? And even just <laughs> technique. Like I was trying to dunk the other day and I realized like when I kind of like go down and do the technique that you know I've looked up, It's like, no, like the muscles you have to tense and the order in which you do it and how fast you spring out of that all matters so much. And even just doing this whole thing, working out is not a linear path. So over Christmas, like I could touch the ring before Christmas. Christmas came in, started eating some ham, started eating too much dessert, started drinking a bit, was just a bit off the rails and mate, everything went downhill, but I was consistent with my workouts, put on some kilos, got a bit slower. 
And even now I'm not working out at breakneck speed. I'm trying to avoid injury, getting it slightly better each workout and I will achieve my goal. And it's the military saying where slow is smooth and smooth is fast. So I was slightly off touching the ring. And now I went back yesterday, I went for a ride, stopped at the basketball court, uh, had a couple of goes and now I can touch the ring and I'm almost getting my fingers over the ring. Oh. And I'm also convinced I'm actually going to go to like a proper, like, you know, indoor court where it's measured. The one I go to is one of these like ghetto rings in a park where, you know, you're going to get stabbed. Where it's just yeah, like the, cha- the, cha- the chain net. <laughs> it doesn't even have a net, mate. What are you talking about? Oh, it's it's just, and it's not even a round ring. It's like a flat, like kind of one. Oh, and, yeah. you know, it's got one of those, just this square pavement thing. That's not even a three point line. Like it wouldn't even make it that oh. far. So God knows how how tall this thing is. I reckon it's way above like, you know, the, the three meter thing. I'm literally going to take a measuring tape and measure it. But, but I'm going to start like training properly, going to basketball courts and I will achieve this goal. It may take longer than I think. I originally set the Feb, uh, end of Feb goal. The bet I have with my mate JB was for three months after that. So Feb to end of June or May, April, May, June. Yeah, June. Mate, I'm getting there. I can feel it. And I'm actually considering like a lifting or jumping coach. So I'm going on that path now, but I'm going to hit a plateau. And I reckon at some point I will need to get a coach to get me over the edge and get that technique going. Well, no, mate. I uh, I remember when I wanted to try and dunk when I was like 14 playing basketball and I saw these jump programs, like these literal programs to maybe like uh, to actually help you dunk. Yeah. Uh, so... Good on you, man. Well, we'll uh, I do want to see the video evidence at some point when you uh, when you achieve it. Have to, mate. Otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Rightio. Well, we'll wrap it up there. Thanks, everyone, for listening. This was the Entrepreneur's Playbook in Scaling Up, What It Takes to Win and Lessons from Founders Plus, our normal uh, weekly personal update. I hope you've enjoyed. If you like these episodes, we'd love for you to share it with a friend. Uh, a couple of cracker episodes we've done recently you have to check out is How to Build Wealth Tax-Free work remotely and travel the world with Reese Skillen. That was a cracker episode. It's nearly at our all-time high. Actually, it would be our all-time high downloaded across podcasts and YouTube now, so check that out. Uh, and also the how I spent 52,000 advisors in 2022 uh, and also the how we use uh, AI and chat GPT in our business. Well, that was a cracker episode as well. So there's some new episodes. If you haven't checked those, go do that. We'd always love your feedback. Please tweet at us at Ben Simpson AU on Twitter and at BabyBackBerg. And Bergs will see everyone next week. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks, guys.